Hi, welcome to a little Easter vlog. It's actually a very rainy Easter weekend here, so we are out to get some groceries. May I reveal my running mate over here? <laughs> I had the stupidest look. <laughs> So we're out to, to do some errands. We had some brunch, we're getting groceries. I'm wearing a rain themed outfit because what else do you do when it's raining? See my dress has little umbrellas on it. I have my umbrella brooch. My friend was kind enough to hand me down this dress. So I always like to wear it, especially when it's raining, which isn't usually that often, but of, of course the weekend we have picnic plans, yep. it rains. So we're gonna run in and get groceries for the all important lamb cake. Oh yeah. Our most favorite tradition. Well, here's my prep progress. I'm trying to get everything ready as much as I can for tomorrow. I don't know if I've explained, we were gonna go on a picnic with another couple, um, like a little Easter picnic, but it's raining all day. It's actually like thunder and lightning tomorrow. So I'm just gonna have the picnic here, bring the picnic indoors. So I'm preparing all the foods. Doesn't this look so pretty? It's such a rainbow. I tried to pick out veggies that were like, as close to what Peter Rabbit would eat. <laughs> I don't know. Trader Joe's always has the cute multicolored carrots and radishes and things. So I just rinsed and cleaned all of the veggies and fruit for tomorrow. And I also boiled, actually I baked two dozen eggs. It was my first time making hard boiled eggs in the oven. Mm, I don't think it went that great. <laughs> they had some scorch marks on them that actually watch, washed off. But then the egg inside, let me see if I can show you. Sorry, this is kind of a graphic egg close-up, but <laughs> the texture turned out okay. Um, but then they got these like little scorch marks on them. So I don't know if it was from like condensation, maybe in my oven or something, but, but they'll be okay for dying. I'll just have to warn folks that when if they eat the eggs that they might have some decor on the inside as well. Um, and then those I made the traditional way where I boiled them on the stove. I gave everything an ice bath, all the eggs an ice bath. So those are in their ice bath and those are gonna become deviled eggs. And I'm like, this is a lot of eggs, <laughs> but it's Easter. So they're all cage-free and organic and I hope they're all from happy chickens. <laughs> but anyway, this is the status of the prep. So I'm also gonna do some cleaning and I also need to get around to baking the lamp cake. I'm also rising some bread rolls in not the most glamorous <laughs> location, but I, needed like a warm corner of my house so the rolls are rising in here and i saw a picture of some really really cute bird rolls but i couldn't find any instructions or recipe for it i'll put it on the screen here because it's on my phone so i can't show you the picture but really cute so i'm just kind of trying to figure out how to do it based on just that alone so i made some rolls like half size for their heads and then twice the size for the body and i tried to make like a little tail <laughs> with a fork <laughs> and give it just a slight like bird body shape. I don't know, as it's rising, it's kind of losing the shape. So we will see what happens with those, but if they turn out at all as cute as that picture, even half as cute, I'll be pretty thrilled. <laughs> we'll see. Well, this is the prototype bird bun. <laughs> it looks not as cute on camera as it is in person. It's, cute. it's actually cute though, but the tail, adding a tail didn't work at all. It just like rose while it was baking. So I just attach the head with a toothpick and put a little face on there. Tomorrow I'm gonna reheat them and brush them with butter and assemble the rest of them. But that's, I don't know, it's cute. Put it in a little nest. Okay, somehow it's 10 p.m. on Easter Eve and I need to bake a lamb cake. So let's get to the lamb cake portion of this video. So if you're not familiar, Lamb cakes are a traditional cake that you would make at Easter, and it's a like a vertical, three-dimensional cake. When I first met my husband, he was like, yeah, my mom always made a lamb cake at Easter. And I said, you mean like she would take a sheet cake and shape it like a laying down? No, it's an actual 3D thing. I had never heard of it until I married into this wonderful, wonderful tradition. It's super vintage. It's just so cute. So the first thing you'll need to make a lamb cake is obviously a lamb cake pan. I don't know what's wrong with me that I own three. I make one lamb cake a year and I own three. This is kind of the more modern style of the lamb cake. It has the like floppy ears. The more vintage style tends to have the sticky outy ears. So I personally prefer the more vintage style. It's also a much smaller cake. 
you see it's actually like kind of a, a tiny little cake. Um, this, I think, would hold more batter. So just keep that in mind if you're doing this style of pan, you might want to get double the batter to be safe. So the way it works is it's in two pieces and this is gonna lay face down and then you're gonna put the back on top. So I would really encourage you to look for one that has a vent hole. I actually love that one. That's in a really good place because you can stick a toothpick in there and check if the cake is done. Ideally, I wish it would be like right here because you wanna check like the most dense part of the cake. On these lamb cake pans, it tends to be in the head, which is actually gonna cook the fastest. But maybe that's why it's good. I guess that's why it's good to know because you don't want to like burn, burn its little head. So I can link to some lamb cake pans in the description for this video. But like I said, try to check that it has that. I have this really truly vintage one here. I think this is so cool because it's still in the box, even though the box is pretty beat up. But I just think it's always really neat to see sort of like the history of things like this. This is probably from the 50s based on the packaging. And this is exactly like the other lamb cake pan I showed you, except it doesn't have a vent hole. And as a result, steam doesn't escape, and this one has overflowed on me in the oven, so you don't want that to happen. I have tried a lot of different recipes for this over the years, but I want to just go with like the most simple, easy one to show you. And this is also what Nate's mom swears by, and I feel like she is the lamb cake queen who has passed this tradition down, and I'm so honored to uphold her tradition, so I love making it her way, which is with boxed pound cake mix. If possible, you want to find 16 ounce size. I am going to zhuzh it up just a little bit using vanilla pudding to add a little bit more moist moisture into the cake. But overall, you just want this to be a really, really dense cake that can withstand the tortures we're going to put it through of being three-dimensional and vertical and all of that good stuff. So using that, that's going to require four eggs, some oil and water. And then for decorating, we're going to decorate, I think, probably the most classic way, which is with frosting and coconut flakes. You're going to want some jelly beans for the nose and the eyes. And I like to put a little Easter grass around the lamb just for presentation. You can also dye coconut flakes green and use those for grass. And lastly, I should mention, it is like utterly imperative that this cake does not stick. If your cake sticks, it's going to be a tragedy. I mean, nothing's gonna to be too tragic because you can always glue it together with frosting and just hope for the best. But especially in the face area, you really don't want this cake to stick. So I think Baker's Joy is truly sufficient to keep it from sticking. You can also use shortening and flour, just like coat the heck out of the pan. So I will show you that step next and we can go ahead and get baking with all of this. Okay, I'll try to do a dramatic demonstration of spraying this with the Baker's Joy. But the reason I like this product, can you see? <laughs> Baker's Joy, is it has the oil and the flour all in one step, and it just makes it so easy to, you know, not worry about missing any crevices. So I'm going to spray the heck out of this. You can see that got in all those nooks and crannies because if you do this by hand you really need to make sure you get all of those and i'm going to do the same thing on the other half i would just rather have too much of this because obviously it's edible if it gets on the cake it's not a big deal and make sure it's going to come out and also you know pro tip do it in your sink because it's gonna spray everywhere now for the batter, I'm gonna put in the package of cake mix. We got the oven preheating, <laughs> as you just heard. Putting in the package of pudding. Oh, my hubby's home. Hi, honey. Adding four eggs. So you see it's a really dense cake recipe as part of the magic. Adding one cup water and a third cup oil. And that is it for the ingredients. So then I'm just gonna mix this together for two minutes in my trusty, beloved mixer. Batter turned out perfectly and all I have to do is add it to the pan. 
So a pro tip is to put the lamb cake pan on a baking sheet because just in case it may overflow, we're really hoping that doesn't happen, but it is always a risk. So this will catch any drips just in case. I'm gonna give it one more spritz of Baker's Joy because it's sort of dripped down a little bit. I truly do not believe you can overdo that product. And now I'm just gonna pour this batter in until it's level with the top of the pan. So just to point out, we are using the front of the lamb's face, not the side that has the hole in it. So put the side without the hole down first, and then just carefully fill her up. So this is a kind of a fine art because you don't want to overflow it but you don't wanna wind up with half of a lamb. So I'm really bringing it up to the brim. Gently negotiate some batter up into the head and the ears. I might have overfilled it, we'll see. You can learn from me. So I'm just nudging batter all the way into the ears. It should fill in on its own, but just in case. Gotta have those cute lamb ears. So I'm gonna take just some plain toothpicks and add them right on top of the head there. Make sure you warn your guests if somebody eats the head of the lamb. <laughs> but that helps just add a little bit of strength into the ear so they don't break off. And then the top piece literally just fits right on, clicks onto place. It doesn't do, on mine at least, it doesn't do like a really satisfying lock into place, just to let you know so you're not really like sitting here trying to make it lock. But what we are gonna do to make sure it stays together because I've had it where the cake rises and that lifts the lid off of it. You don't wind up with a lamb shaped in that case. So we're gonna be using some floss because I always forget to get baker's twine. It's not much, but I just use some <laughs> dental floss to tie it shut at the neck and at the back. So hopefully if it were to rise at all in the oven, this will keep it together and force it into our lovely lamb shape. Okay, so I am ready to pop it in the oven at 350 for probably about an hour. We're going to check on it many times, so I'll keep you posted. Good luck, little lamb. Good luck on your journey. Okay, it's been about almost 50 minutes. So we're going to take a look. Oh, she's bursting out a little bit. That should be okay, hopefully. The rest of it stayed intact, so for future reference, maybe tie that end as well with the twine. So I'm just going to put a toothpick into here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take it out because there were no crumbs on the toothpick. And in my experience, this cake can really dry out easily. So it's kind of a gamble. But the fact that it did, ooh, what was I thinking touching that? Stupid. But the fact that it did lift and I can see in, it looks like there's a nice color on the cake. Maybe a little brown and it looks done. I guess I might as well stick a toothpick on this side as well. <laughs> like I'm taking his temperature, <laughs> which actually taking his temperature would be another option. So that just has a couple clean crumbs, like no um, wet batter or anything on it. So I think we are good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just leave it be in its current casing for just a couple minutes to cool, start cooling off. I've just let this rest on this little wire rack for about five minutes, so it's warm, but I can touch it, and I am going to take the lid off. Hopefully she's a good little lamb. Oh, what a good girl. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, what is going on here? Okay, this isn't as bad as it looks. <laughs> I was like, she needs brain surgery. Um, I think it's just... It was sticking a little bit, um, but that's that's okay. We can work with that. And then this crack here, I'm not loving what I'm seeing with that. I don't know why I did it. I'm thinking maybe I did slightly overfill the pan because, you know, she was busting out in the back. But again, there's nothing you can't glue together with frosting. Hope and dreams. So we will hope that that's enough. It looks a little moist, but I think it's, I'm gonna triple check that it, it's all good. I think it's good. It's just a dense, kind of a dense, moist cake. So I think it's gonna be okay. Uh, there's different schools of thoughts on how to let your, your lamb 
cool and when to take it out of the pan. I think I'm just gonna let it rest in the pan, maybe even overnight and just let it fully cool and then we'll take her out and hopefully the front fared a little better than the back. So we shall see. At least it's a cake and it is somewhat lamb shaped. We can work with that. <laughs> in other news, I'm already dying eggs because I wanted to make fun pastel colored Easter eggs, but oh my gosh, like that's not a color of egg anyone wants to eat. <laughs> Nor is that really. And then my pinks and my purples aren't taking. I guess it's sort of starting to, but not much. And they just didn't peel very well, so you know how like that kind of highlights all the little cracks, but it's going to be okay. Once there's filling in there, a little garnish, I'm sure it's all going to work out, but... <laughs> These are like straight out of Dr. Seuss. So I think on that note, I'm going to rescue the rest of these eggs and call it a night. My crazy Easter experimentations are going to just come to an end for now. And tomorrow will be Easter and we can just celebrate. And uh, I'm glad I did all the prep. <laughs> Happy Easter. <laughs> Easter bunny came. I don't think you're ever too old for Easter baskets. So I have these little vintage baskets that I like to put a couple things for us each year. And those are for the pets, some treats for the dogs and cat. And they're a little bucket of eggs. <laughs> and Target really brought their A game on the mugs this year. This is like the cutest Easter mug I've ever beheld. So I'm having my coffee and just gonna get ready for our fun day. Come join us. The lamb cake is obviously totally cool. It's been sitting out all night, so I'm just gonna put it on this cake pan and let it rest for a little bit before I decorate it. Hopefully it's gonna come right out. Hmm. Okay, she doesn't wanna come out, but we're gonna stay calm. Okay, phew, ta-da! She's so cute. <laughs> Don't mind the dishwasher noise, but I'll show you what's in our Easter baskets. <laughs> I got a book. I think this looks like a good like spring, summer type of read. Hopefully, beach read. Peeps, I'm gonna serve some of these today. They're so cute. My favorite candy, Sour Patch Kids. An orange, a toothbrush. <laughs> my mom always would put toothbrushes in our stockings and Easter baskets. And then my eggs are full of <laughs> Yogurt covered raisins. I don't know if anybody else in the world still likes those. And a lipstick, a classic vintage Revlon shade called Wine With Everything. Kind of a dark red, so that's fun. And Nady got, he has pistachios in his eggs. And he got some fun socks for his fun sock collection. One of his favorite candies orange and toothbrush and a remote control boat because you never know when you're gonna need that what's happening <laughs> it is time it's a good idea to kind of level the bottom i think mine's gonna hopefully be okay I'm gonna, yeah okay <laughs> i'm gonna put a lot of glue and we'll just see what happens with it so you just carefully pick her up Oh, that's just a, I see. Ooh, right there wants to break. Oh my gosh, do you see that? There's a crack. This is like my second worst one I've ever made, but that's no. okay because I want to show the... Oh yeah, that first remember one. Remember the, the one year? Well, I dropped it. That was the main problem that year. Mm, so, <laughs> I'm going to just try to kind of... I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm going to just put a toothpick in here. <laughs> see if that helps hold it up. Okay. It has a little support. In, inside there and now it looks happier already. <laughs> frosting it is really you know pretty simple especially because I'm just using the frosting to adhere coconut to it if you want you can make like little swirly patterns in the frosting and just use that like the wool oh yeah you've done that yes I think that turns out really really cute but since we're using coconut I don't have to really be very cautious about this looking nice frosting? yeah it's just you already showed it though right I got everything the way your mom does it. And this is Elizabeth Crocker. <laughs> and also, <laughs> the other nice thing about this cake is you can kind of get your cake tray messy because I'm going to hide it with grass when I display it. So 
that's all there is to this step. It should be fairly easy as long as it stays put. Okay, so there is frosting on all the surfaces. You really could almost leave it this way, but we're gonna start adding coconut. Sometimes I leave the face bare. Like, you know how, I don't know, the iconic sheep has his face out. <laughs> I should really study, I don't know, sheep. <laughs> all I know are like children's illustrations of them, but anyway, today I'm just gonna go full fleece over the whole thing. And you kind of have to, you kind of have to spackle it on there. With your uh, clean fingers. Yeah. Obviously, highly wash and sanitize before doing this for company, as I always do. There's a few chores that Charlotte trusts me with. Very few. <laughs> no. And one of them is uh, making the eyes and ears and nose out Nate of jelly beans. Nate is the master jelly bean assembler on this project. I didn't want to interrupt that compliment. <laughs> so, uh... But you need to find two black ones for the eyes and a pink one. I shouldn't have scissors hanging open, sorry. A pink one for, uh, I don't, how do you do this with one hand? This is crazy. <laughs> how am I going to cut things? Okay. I pray that this stays in focus while I try to use two hands. Okay, so normal size jelly beans are a little too big for, do you like the horizontal or the vertical? Is that for the inner ear? This is for the, oh, the nose will be vertical, right? I mean, a horizontal. I mean, whatever you think. It just sticks out funny if you don't cut the back off, so. Cutting it off. I can either use this or this for, there, for the nose. It doesn't look so pink in here, but it is pink. Believe you me. So the eye, I make pretty small because you don't want big old bulging eyes. Even though they should be because he's about to be eaten. Every time I juggle it, the head like really bobbles. But she's holding together. She's about to have some life to her, but I think the coconut makes really cute fleece. So he's got a truth. little frosting on the yep, back yep. of the jelly bean. No oh, it hands. looks so much cuter already. It does. Careful with that head, it's so fragile. Oh, okay, I don't wanna knock that over. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. Okay, okay. Nate's really good at knowing where to place the uh, features, don't, don't, I question it, me. but this, oh. this looks perfect. And then we like to do the inner ear, so that's what he's working on there. Okay, so this one I try to really set in because it's like it's supposed to be the inside of the ear. Careful! Is that ear really that fragile? Yes, oh, it's very fragile. Okay, I'll fix the coconut. Okay. <laughs> Is it weird to see man hands in the camera? <laughs> on a milk and honey vlog. Yeah, sorry to be jarring the ladies of the internet. Just don't jar my lamb cake. I know. Am I even on the ear? Ooh, you are. Be careful. I, I feel like that's not at all right. What do you mean? That looks good, right? No? I, I really it. don't know. And once it has its eyes, it really comes to life. We hope. We hope. We hope. Okay, ready? How about an eye oh, right there? Oh, it already looks so good. Yes. Nice and done. Nope. Oh, got an eyelash casting. in his eye. It's like a little uh, highlight on there. Mm -hmm. Ready? Oh nice. shoot, I got icing on the eyeball. <laughs> it's okay, I'm gonna clean it up, add a little coconut where we lost some coconut. I'm gonna tie a ribbon around its neck cause that's like the cutest step and then put some grass around it and it's gonna be all done. So this is the scene for our indoor picnic. I'll show you the spread. There's dip. I should move this next to the veggies. I think the deviled eggs turned out so cute. I put chamomile flowers on there because they're technically edible. I don't think we're going to want to eat them, but <laughs> it's an option. And I wrapped up the napkins like little bunnies. I wound up just kind of making a charcuterie with veggies and fruit to snack on. All my wild Trader Joe's blossoms since we can't be outside. I'm just bringing the outside in. And I think the bird rolls turned out so cute, especially that one. Nate made that one, so it has a little open beak. He's always next level with his designs. <laughs> so cute. And then the most important reveal. Woo! The finished lamb cake. I love her. Turned out perfect, I think. Perfectly imperfect, you know. Hopefully she stays upright. Hopefully that head stays on. But Nate did a great job on the little face. And I think the flowers always make it extra cute. So very festive for our indoor picnic this Easter.
Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello. We have a little Bloody Mary station. I did some salted rims. Ooh, some of those got really salty. <laughs> and did some garnishes that we can put on there. I love a Bloody Mary or a Virgin Bloody Mary. It's so good. And I got some fancy ice in my ice bucket. So we are ready to party. All right. We're going to go in bed. <laughs> the head first? <laughs> yeah, which one can he survive? We made it. We made it through. <laughs> See, he's fine. Yeah, he doesn't mind. He's not reacting at all. It's like a rack he's of lamb now. <laughs> so these were our half of all the eggs that got dyed. We had this cool set that made them kind of planetary. I really like how those turned out. And these, I busted out the acrylic paints, which was a game changer. <laughs> Never done that on eggs. It's not, I assume it's not edible anymore, but still very cute to have for decor. A little Humpty Dumpty. So good. Nate made these with colored pencils. Look at that, it's so cute, so cute. It's, um, this is a tradition that his mom always makes an egg that looks like an Easter basket, and I just love that. I think that's so cute. Thank you. And he also did this brilliant seascape with a little <laughs> sea boat there. <laughs> Sailboat. <laughs> Sailboat. <laughs> Sailboats are sea boats. They are, that's true. <laughs> so that was our spoils from the Easter egg decor this year. So much fun. <laughs> well... <laughs> They all look various stages of miserable. <laughs> Do you see? You sweet boy. <laughs> Hi, baby. <laughs> they all got little Easter pajamas. <laughs> so cute. So cute. I gotta take some photos of them in their little matching outfits. Oh my gosh. Little Easter bunnies. They're very excited to smell their Easter basket. What's in there, guys? Oh, do you see you, sweet buddy? <laughs> Johnny's kind of, Johnny's kind of over it. He, love it. <laughs> <laughs> he can get out at any time. He's like Houdini. Mm -hmm. No, that's a, that one's a cat treat. <laughs> okay, but you ready? Oh, the, the oh. chaos! Oh. oh no! Did you do that or did yeah, he? I did. He's so lazy. He's I like, know. I will not be leaving this position for my Easter candy. Here, at least get it out of the okay. cup. DC, you're such a good boy. Do you see what's in your Easter egg? Ah, that was so fun. I absolutely loved our special Easter. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Hope you get some inspiration that you might try making a lamb cake. Let me know if you do. I highly recommend it. It was actually delicious, I thought. Everybody else said so too, but they might've been being nice, but I thought it was really, really good. And that was so much fun. So thank you for celebrating with us. And I hope you're inspired just to make every day feel special and every day feel like a holiday because you deserve that and life is so much fun when you have that <laughs> mentality so i will see you in my next video hit subscribe if you want to follow along i will be back with more soon and i'll see you then bye